pleasant morning to members of the media and also uh, viewers that are looking at us live on uh, Facebook. Welcome to Channel Tobago Police Service Weekly Media Briefing for Wednesday, 18 December 2019. I'm Superintendent Wayne Meister, Public Information Officer of the TTPS. And joining me today on the media briefing is ASP Curtis Julian, who is a senior officer at the Fraud Squad. And today's topic will be the whole aspect of safety tips, general safety tips, as it relates to ATM fraud. So without much ado, I will hand you over straight to ESP Curtis Julian, who will give you some information and some tips. Pleasant good morning to everyone, members of the media and public, general public. My name is Curtis Julian. I'm acting assistant superintendent of police attached to the fraud squad. I'm here today mainly to sensitize the public as to the ATM and ABM skim, skimming and pin capturing that has been going on and prevalent throughout Trinidad and Tobago and by further the world. What we have happening on a daily basis are persons, mostly non-nationals, skimming our machines throughout Trinidad and Tobago. Generally, they go to places that are remote and late hours when there are not much people. We have some statistics that I need to share with you. During the first half, 2019, January to June, we had a total of 542 reports of ABM fraud. That would have been divided amongst four banks, Scotia Bank, RBC, Republic Bank, and Full Citizens Bank. We had a decrease in three of those banks between July and November, since the inception of the ABM task force. The ABM task force operates independently. To decrease this type of activity, information has been coming to hand. And based on the information and the intelligence, we have made several arrests, causing the decrease in this type of fraudulent activity. We also have um, some components that we need to advise and sensitize the public when they go to any ABM machine. We have the card slot overlay, which is the green component as you enter a machine, mostly. you just go to the side. Yeah. Right. Face it forward. For most of you who go to the ABMs, you recognize that FCB. RBC, most banks have this type of card slot over. This is the overlay that the skimmers put to capture your information as you put in your card. This works together with the plastic. A plastic panel. Yeah. That is placed to the top of the screen on any ABM machine, thereby rendering it look to look as a normal ABM machine. This component is fitted with a pinhole. Point on the pinhole. And also a Wi-Fi camera, 
which tells us that the fraud says uh, a step ahead in this type of activity because they no, no longer need to go away and get the information. They could be right somewhere in close proximity and reaping that information, putting it on the computer and embossing it on the new cards. The cards that I speak about is any card with a magnetic strip is what they use to put. Up to Saturday, we got some cards, Starbucks, um, Massey stores, and of course, they make their own cards, silver and gold, white and gold, my apologies. The gold signifies information that they take from credit cards, generally, and the white from debit cards. Early in October, we made a vast breakthrough by holding a Canadian citizen of Sri Lankan birth. We believe, and I say this because of the drastic drop in statistics and reports that he would have been one of the major players. We also had other intelligence come into hand that would have to add to that. But you would understand that there's only so much we could share at this point. Back to the components. We have the handheld skimmer, the little blue one. This, ladies and gentlemen, when you go to use a point of sale machine, always keep your eyes on your card. Because from the time you take your eyes off the card, this little guy here, they swipe your card, there's a memory card inside recording all the information. And then they tell you, in using the point of sale machine, that the transaction would have failed. Now, this point of sale machine is a genuine point of sale machine. But they rig the machine by placing other components inside. A memory card. Unfortunately, we can't open this because we need to use it for other purposes that will also capture all of your financial information, including your PIN, which will open up to your information. This machine is very difficult to detect because it is a normal looking machine. So my advice to the persons who are going to use point of sale machines, in all instances, when is a fraudulent point of sale machine being used? The person doing the transaction will tell you that the transaction has failed or connection error. Or they will tell you that the battery is low, so they have to use the next machine. Those are flags that you should raise one time and contact your bank, your local bank, that concerns the card that was used. If you have online banking, monitor your transactions immediately to ensure that no transaction unauthorized by you was done. This is the only advice we have to contain this type of fraudulent activity. We have the card reader encoder. This is coupled with a computer, any laptop. The information that they would have gotten when they rigged the machine 
They will put it on the computer. Swipe the empty card, which in turn will receive all the information from the computer. And we now have a good debit card or credit card, as the case may be. The persons that mastermind these type of activities most times never go to do the harvesting. And by harvesting, I mean there are two types of activities in card skimming. Firstly, you go and you rig the machine. Rigging the machine is placing all those components I spoke about, save and except for the point of sale machine, on the ATM machine. <clears throat> The persons who are rigging those machines will not leave those components for more than 24 hours. Most times, they will be somewhere in the vicinity, making sure or ensuring that no one interferes with it, and there is a constant flow of traffic into and out of the bank. So they will know where they will score big and where they wouldn't score big. If they realize that there is a slow flow, they will move, remove, and that is how we, come, we came to... Um, made the arrest in Trin City on Saturday. We got some information. We acted on it immediately. We realized that there was a constant flow of people, but not to the ABM. They tried to remove the components, and that's where we punched on them and arrested them. Further search, searches conducted. <clears throat> Unnoted a number of cards in their residence, and they have now been charged and on their way to court as we speak, all right? Um, the challenges with these persons is that the majority of persons that have been involved in this type of activity are non-nationals. We have Venezuelans, Mexicans. We have persons from Europe, Bulgarians, Russians. And it is our information that there are a lot of other nationalities as we speak in the country with the information that there's a low security as it pertains to banking, the financial sector. We have some keypad guards. These guards are supposed to be at the side of the keyboard, both sides. Some banks will have a flap on top, in the case of FCB, and I think RBL, Republic. These guards are fitted with cameras. These cameras would be captured in your pin. Now, these would not be coupled with the overhead plastic panel because it's like double indemnity. We're do using two cameras to do the same thing. So these would have just cameras by themselves to capture the pin, and they have something called, well, unfortunately, we don't have that, a deep insert skimmer. I don't know if you all could zoom in on the bottom half. It's like a plastic It's like a plastic card with two cuts. A memory card appended, attached to it, and a small battery. This is placed into the insert, into the machine, and it slips in. There's the older machines has a place that captures this card to keep it in place. So there's no need to stick it onto the machine. And as you place your card underneath, it gets the 16 numbers, the embossed code. You put 
put in your pen, it reads it, and they come and withdraw that card, pass it through the same card reader onto the computer and make their cards. Right? We don't have this in our, because this is something very hard to get. It only it works on the old machines, by the way. Right? Most of us will go and we'll hear the machine say, welcome to the blue machine and welcome to RBC. We hear that through the speakers. Now the speakers are above our head or above the machine. These speakers can also be rigged or the panel containing the speakers can be rigged. And when I say rigged, they attach a panel, show the front, show the front, no, the front. That is the speaker cutouts, right? It looks normal when it's attached to the top. But in truth and fact, it's a proper rigging machine to run. Where they have placed a camera, which is being used from the cell phone. And there's also a memory card and a battery to keep powering up the cell phone so it would not die. This will be taking out your pin number and also all 16 digits, the embossed code, code on each card as it goes in. And what they miss when they go in, when it comes out, they will get the remainder. These people are so technical that they place these same 16 numbers on the dummy card together with an expiry date and we have a proper working debit card or credit card. So ladies and gentlemen, we are faced with a task that we must deal with expeditiously. Mm -hmm. I mentioned the, the encoder, which is the um, card reader. The only thing I don't have here is the laptop, but I, I guess everybody knows what a laptop looks like. Right? It's just a basic laptop. All the information goes onto the laptop. They feed it through the, the card reader, swipe the card, and as soon as the card is swiped, all the information went onto it. Right. right, so we have some facts on the skimming devices, right? They are normally attached to the ATM machines during the quiet period, banking period, which is early mornings or late evening. The length of time may vary based on the traffic that is taking place at the said location, but they leave it no longer than 24 hours because for fear that someone may find it based on the tips that I'm going to give you soon, persons must be sensitized and must understand that when they go to do transactions, there are certain things they must be vigilant of, certain checks they have to do. And in order for a successful skimming to take place, it requires card reader and a camera. One is to read the information and one is to capture the pin. So once you have the information, financial information, and you have the pin, you're in business. All right? Also, I mentioned wireless information. The information may be downloaded wirelessly based on this new technology with the Wi-Fi wi cameras that they're using. In saying so, the customers have to be very vigilant, entering and leaving all ATM machines because the surrounding areas, the perpetrators may be very well sitting there, conducting their business, or even waiting to remove their components and go to another location.
my advice to the members of the public uh, that on entry to an ABM machine or a room, as the case may be, could have some that, like in the malls, C3 and Trinity, they are in the open. They're not in any room, right? We must do some physical checks. Our physical checks would entail tugging on the card slot, which is the green stuff there. Look up above your head to the panel. If you see the panel looking a little shaky, the police won't do you nothing if you're checking. You shake it. Most of it, they use adhesive to stick it, like two-side tape. All right? Similarly, with the plastic, plastic component, each component, component is put there temporarily. So it takes nothing out of you except maybe five seconds more to physically check these components on the machine. And it will save us a whole lot of pain and a lot of money. All right? We have to be beware, beware of machines without keypad guards, which are the two guards at the side of the keypad. If we go into ABM and we recognize that the guards are missing, or even the, the flap, my suggestion to you all, choose another machine where the security might not be compromised. The point of sale machine, as I said, is one of the most difficult components to identify as being fraudulent because they are using proper machines. The merchants, most of the time, are not the people doing the fraud, but they are coupled with the persons who are doing the fraud. So they bring a point of sale machine for them. IRBC bring a point of sale machine for you, the merchant, and you, the criminal or the fraudster, comes to me, the merchant, and gives me a, makes me an offer. The offer sounds lucrative, and I take the machine, and I start to aid and abet in the fraud, defrauding the customers that come to you. So at the end of the day also, a part and parcel of the fraud. Once they tell you that the machine transactions failed, or the con there's a connection error, or they make some sort of excuse, like the battery dead or weak, take your card, do not continue the transaction, take the receipt that they are giving to you, and contact your bank immediately, even before you leave. When we contact the banks, we have to identify a number of things. Right. We should contact the bank and report the name, the address, the description of the merchant or business place. This in turn will assist the bank in shutting down the machine immediately and also closing your account on that card. Subsequently, the bank will contact you, the customer, and inform you that your card was compromised and you would have to get a replacement. It may have happened to a number of us, so I guess we know what to expect. In addition to the card skimming, right, we have a number of fraudulent checks going around. This period being the Christmas, pre-Christmas and pre-carnival period, the prevalence of the fraudulent checks and dishonored checks are of tantamount importance to us. And it should be to you, more so the business sector 
persons with businesses. Business owners must be vigilant of persons attempting to do business on a Friday evening or on weekends. As these checks that are being tendered or uttered in exchange for their goods or services, most likely will be fraudulent or dishonored. The reason being that no banking transactions or information can be gotten from the bank over that weekend period until maybe the next working day, which may be a Monday, unless there is a public holiday on that day. So business persons or persons with business places must pay attention to this type of activity. Persons trying to do transactions, heavy transactions especially, on a Friday evening or any part of the weekend before a public holiday or before a long weekend. As early as yesterday, we arrested two dri a driver and a loader, again, being third parties. The perpetrators used people to do their dirty work. They gave them a check. They called them and told them to pick up a check at a, a location and go to another location and collect some goods. We were informed. We were there. We followed them after they picked up the check. We didn't see the handover of the check because the person was not there. They left it. After they picked up the goods, we intercepted, and they are now being interviewed and questioned with reference to that crime. Obviously, you know, they would not give up the source because the persons who are being in receipt of this type of money never come to the front. So they copy people's check, they steal checkbooks, check leaves, and write an exorbitant among 70,000, 80,000. They want tires, they want batteries, they want whatever. Cause you to part with your goods for no money because those checks could never be honored based on the fraudulent type of activity. All right? So this, this type of activity is more for the heavy periods, Christmas, pre-carnival, and also on weekends, Fridays, public holidays, and long weekends. Once again, I would like to make the public aware and ask that they exercise vigilance when going to use machines at any location, especially in the night. Because in the night or early morning are the times that the fraudsters or the perpetrators may be around. And then it may become a little more dangerous for the civilians. Mm -hmm. So by the floor. Questions? Okay, good morning, uh, Ryan Hamilton Davis, Trinidad Newsday. Uh, morning, when, morning again. And the, one of the first questions I want to ask is with regard to the point of sales skimmer. Uh, I know you said that is one of the more difficult, um, difficult devices or difficult um, modified devices to actually get a to get a, 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 a sight of beforehand. And it seems even though you have you you have given some kind of advice. It seems reactive rather than proactive, in the, in the fact that you know you have to get you have to get into that whole seal transaction and everything first time and foremost. Is there any is there any proactive measures that a customer or person could use to 
get out of that problem altogether. Not at this point, because I am saying that the point of sale machines are properly issued machines. Mm -hmm. But based on the outside persons coming in and making suggestions to the merchant, and it's lucrative to the merchant, both parties, and they buy into it, they will take the machine. Would you, would you advise that people use more cash than, than your card in, in these instances, or, or is it still up to the customer how well, they will? Would... it's totally up to the customer. But I'm still saying that sensitizing them on the use of the machine and the shortcomings of the merchants when purchase, making purchases, mm -hmm. they should react in a certain way that the transactions may never go through. And that is to retrieve your card instead of continuing the transaction. Because if you continue that transaction, right, in furtherance to what you ask, you'll be paying double, not even double, you'll be paying for, let's say you buy a shoe for $300, you'll be paying $300 to the merchant. And your whole account might have seven thousand dollars the next 6700 they could take all. So you'll be doing yourself an injustice. So my advice, as long as that transaction has failed, or they're using excuses like uh, the battery is dead and that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, retrieve your card from it. So at the first sign of a red flag, full sign of a red flag, retrieve, do not continue the transactions. Great. Um, now, you also mentioned, um, you also gave us some numbers here, 542 reports of ABM fraud. Now, um, is that reports or are, uh, are, or are those arrests connected to reports? No, no, that would be reports. How many that arrests? That was only in the Port of Spain area. That was in the Port of Spain. Has, has there, how many arrests have there been uh, with regard to ABM fraud, investigations into ABM fraud? All right. To be fair in my statement, the ABM task force was an entity before I went to the first one. I reintroduced it in September, and from September to now, 19 persons have been placed before the court for ABM, only ABM fraud. Between September, that's about three months? Yes, sir. The last quarter? All right. uh, as far 18 as being non-nationals and one national. Okay, and speaking of non-nationals, um, there was a recent heavy influx of non-nationals, uh, for one reason or another, uh, into the country. Uh, has that uh, added to the spike in in the in the crime in the in this crime in particular? I cannot quantify that statement, so because prior to the influx, there were non-nationals being arrested for this type of offense. Over the uh, years. All right. Um, one quick, uh, one um, two more quick ones. One for Mr. Um, Meister. Uh, as seen as we're speaking about the entire <coughs> banking situation, I don't know if Mr. Julian can uh, to, can um, uh, assist as well. Uh, there has been a certain level of disorder, at least reports of a certain level of disorder, with the recent exchange of um, of the hundred dollar bills. All right. Uh, some reports of. People passing away, unfortunately, during the during the um, during the exchange period. Some people um, blaming murders on uh, 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 situations connected to it, and so on. I just wanted to ask you, Mr. Meister, how is the police dealing with that that particular transaction, that um, particular exchange period, and how people and how the police are dealing with that? Well, first, let me say that um, the well, to what you're alluding to, murders and 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 the cash and so on. It, um, there's no connection really. However, because of this situation with the one hundred dollar bill exchange, we will have the police will have accepted the patrols within all financial institutions. Mm -hmm. And also we have advised some members of the public to move in numbers to hire the necessary security firms to assist them when they're moving to and fro. Because persons will be changing large sums of cash. We also want to advise persons not to keep large sums of cash homes at their homes because we have some challenges as it relates to home invasion. Just recently in Central, we had a, a home invasion situation, which the police dealt with um, very meaningfully. 
So we are advising persons not to keep that amount of cash at home and to be extra cautious. In addition to that, you know, during the Christmas period, we have persons coming to your homes, or you may invite persons coming to your homes to assist in cleanup, cutting the lawn and painting and so on. Very, be very mindful of the persons who you hire, all right? Do the necessary security checks and so on. Right. And as far as, um, well, seeing as we have roads scored before us as well, as far as uh, counterfeits and so on are uh, uh, concerned, I know there, there was reports of one bill, one, uh, one type of bill, uh, the new, um, uh, one type of counterfeit of the new polymer bill. Has there been any other, um, any other attempts at counterfeiting the, the, the bill as yet? Uh, what advice would people, would you give to, the, to people for that as well? Anyone can answer that one, Mr. Julian or Mr. Well, Master? As far as the reports are concerned, we have not received any reports since that first incident. And for the part two of the question, every day on the media, social or your type of media, they're sensitizing persons on what to look for in the new money because as with everything, change is very hard to accept. And they are the bright persons who use that opportunity to punks on the unaware. So my advice to the citizenry uh, to try to get as much information as it pertains to your bills, the new type of money. There are a number of security features, the most prevalent being as polymer, is, as we know, is plastic, mm -hmm. a type of plastic. You can't photocopy plastic. When you photocopy the plastic, it's going to come out like a black spot. All right, so the main thing, that window, on the hundred dollar bill. <laughs> no, not on that. Okay, now. Yeah, you can show that one. Don't embarrass myself. I don't know where that comes from. All right, here we have the new hundred dollar bill. One of the m most prevalent features is this hundred mark here. If I put my finger here, you would see my finger. It's a plastic window. If you photocopy this, it's going to come out black. And there's no way you could put your finger behind a counterfeit bill and see it. Right? I don't know if you're making out of the finger. It's so big, but. There are also a number of other security features that I think you should um, you could go online and check it. Right? They, they put it on the newspapers every day. The social media also has it. For those of you who are on WhatsApp and Facebook, they put in them. So we, we have to sensitize ourselves. We have to make ourselves responsible because ignorance is no excuse of this law and any other law. Trinidad and Tobago. So we have to bring ourselves to speed so we may not fall prey to these fraudsters. And uh, one, one more, uh, there was also reports of about uh, well, hundreds of millions of dollars in dirty money, quote unquote, all right, um, uh, having come into the bank since this, uh, since this exchange. How, what is the police going to do about that? How are they, how are they following up on that? And you know, how many arrests do you expect to get from those things? Well, well, what happened, the Superintendent Lucas was here last week, and he would have indicated, um, together with um, Mr. Um, the Director of the Financial Intelligence Bureau, Bureau was also here on, on um, our briefing. And what it indicated to us is that, um, I know our mantra in the service now is, if you see something, say something. Mm -hmm. So the banks and all those institutions have a responsibility that when they suspect these transactions that they have to report it to us immediately and then we'll take the necessary action and monitor it as the case may be. So um, that is in place as we speak. The, our, our financial in investigation branch is also on alert for all those reports coming into us. Any arrests yet? Uh, no, not as we speak. And last one from me. I don't know if anybody else have anything. I don't think, I don't know. Uh, there was an incident this morning at Scotia Bank. As for, um, there was uh, apparently uh, either an incendiary device or, or, or threat of an incendiary device in uh, the Scotia Bank on Richmond and Park. 
uh, do you have any details on that? Yeah, so um, based on my information, I received, um, well, first let me let you know that they, they, um, somebody was saying that there was a loud explosion. That is not true. What had happened is that officers from the Central Police Station visited Scotia Bank on Park and Richmond Street, and they interviewed the OSH um, branch manager. And what she indicated is that two workers were on the third floor. Uh, they were actually carrying some boxes from point A to point B. And there was, some, there was a device, uh, a cell phone battery, and some other um, um, device with electrical wires being exposed. And as a result, uh, there was a spark in the box, and smoke started emanating from the box, which alerted the, the sensors within the building. Um, the box was carried outside the fire service, was alerted. And when they came, they, they extinguished the, the box. Um, but um, it, there was no threat of any um, explosive device per se. It was just a matter of wires being exposed um, that, you know, caught that, that situation. So it's nothing to be, you know, hyped about, in a sense. Anybody? Anybody? That's it? Okay, thank you very much for gracing us with your presence. We'll see you all next week, same time, same place.